Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do a basic overview of fetal circulation. This is an important topic to understand if you're going to try and piece through the mechanisms of congenital heart defects and try to understand how they will produce their effects. And you also should have an understanding of the basic flow of blood through the chambers of the heart. That's a previous video, and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. Now, let's get into the meat of fetal circulation. So first, let's understand this structure right here. This is called the placenta. The placenta is an organ, and it allows the mother to not only share her oxygenated and nutrient-rich blood with the developing fetus, but it also allows waste products from the fetus uh, to be returned to the mother's circulation, where they'll be recycled, gotten rid of, whatever needs to happen. Now, there are two major vessels that are coming to and from the placenta, and those are the umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein. The one shown right here, the larger one, is the umbilical vein, and then these kind of bluish purple ones that are wrapping around the umbilical vein, these are the umbilical arteries. Okay? Now, the umbilical vein, which is shown right here, is red. And that might seem a little unintuitive, because usually veins are shown as blue unless we're in the lungs, right? because um, blue is meant to show deoxygenated blood and red is meant to show oxygenated. That is not a mistake. The umbilical vein does carry oxygenated blood. Remember what the definition of a vein is. A vein carries blood back to the heart. An artery carries blood away from the heart. Well, if we consider this fetus's heart right here, this blood, you can track the arrow, is going toward its heart. So therefore, this is actually a vein even though it carries oxygenated blood from the mother. Okay? So once that vessel leaves the placenta, it's considered the umbilical vein, it carries blood to the fetus, and that blood is oxygenated. The umbilical arteries over here are carrying blood back to the placenta, but in the end, they really are carrying it away from the heart, which is why they're termed arteries. We'll come back to those, as I mentioned at the end of the video. Now take a look right here at the umbilical vein. It's traveling away from the placenta towards the fetal heart, and it's coming up here and around the level of the liver. It's going to fuse with this large vessel right here called the inferior vena cava. Now in any individual, doesn't matter if it's a fetus or an adult, inferior vena cava returns deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Well, why does the umbilical vein fuse with the inferior vena cava? because it allows the umbilical vein blood to bypass the liver. When we're looking at fetal circulation, it's important to remember there's two major organs that we're attempting to bypass. One is the liver, just because the liver is not, not fully functional yet, and the other are the lungs. And it's not that the lungs are not fully functional, it's just that they're filled with fluid, right? You can't use your lungs if they're filled with fluid. Um, and it's not until birth that they actually inflate and the lungs become usable. So we're bypassing the liver and the lungs. And the umbilical vein fuses with the inferior vena cava through this duct right here called the ductus venosus. So the ductus venosus in this diagram allows that umbilical vein to fuse with the inferior vena cava and it really just continues on as the inferior vena cava. Okay? So going up here, this is still inferior vena cava, but it's had the umbilical vein fuse with it or at least dumps into the inferior vena cava through that ductus venosus. Now you'll see here uh, before it fuses with the inferior vena cava, it does give a little bit of blood that goes to the liver. Again, the liver does need blood to survive. It's just we don't want a huge amount of it going to the liver. And so this branch coming off of the umbilical vein fuses with the hepatic portal vein down here and get, get, allows the liver to receive a little bit of blood. Now, in any individual, the inferior vena cava is transporting deoxygenated blood back to the heart. But once the umbilical vein dumps into that, now for the rest of the way, that inferior vena cava is actually bringing oxygenated blood back to the heart. And that oxygenated blood is ultimately going to go throughout all the tissues of the fetus. We'll see that in just a minute. So the inferior vena cava 
brings oxygenated blood back to the right atrium of the heart. Now, once this oxygenated blood is in the right atrium of the heart, it can go through one of two pathways. The first one over here is the one we're used to hearing about in a normal adult. It would go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and then it would go out into the pulmonary trunk, where we will stop for now. Okay, Up until the pulmonary trunk, that is the normal pathway of blood uh, from the right atrium. However, in the fetus, there's a hole between the right atrium and the left atrium. It's actually in the wall between the two atria. And this hole is called the foramen ovale. The foramen ovale allows blood to move from the right atrium into the left atrium. Now, of course, in a normal adult, this hole right here is no longer present and has been solidified into what's called the fossa ovale. And it no longer allows blood transport from the right atrium into the left atrium. Now, why is this foramen ovale necessary in the developing fetus? There's two reasons. Number one, remember I said that one of the things that the blood supply here wants to do is bypass the lungs because, again, the lungs are filled with fluid so they can't be used for oxygenating the blood. So this foramen ovale allows some of the blood from the right atrium to actually move into the left atrium. The second reason that's important is because, remember, this blood in the right atrium in the fetus is oxygenated. Remember, that umbilical vein, when it dumped into the inferior vena cava, this blood is now oxygenated. So it's a way to get oxygenated blood from the right atrium to the left atrium, and the job of the left side of the heart is to pump oxygenated blood to all the peripheral tissues. So then we have things as normal. Blood in the left atrium then goes to the left ventricle, which then goes out the aorta. And as we would expect, blood from the aorta goes to the systemic circulation to supply oxygen and nutrients to all the peripheral tissues. But there's another difference. Not all of the blood moves from the right atrium to the left atrium. Some goes through the right side of the heart, the right-sided pathway. Again, we have the right atrium. It goes to the right ventricle and to the pulmonary trunk. But wait a second. Pulmonary trunk leads to the lungs, but I thought we didn't want blood flow going to the lungs. It turns out that the pulmonary trunk has another hole that connects it to the aorta. And you can actually see that here in the picture. Look at this big blue arrow. Notice the pulmonary trunk actually has a connection into the aorta. In other words, a piece of the pulmonary trunk actually fuses into the aorta and dumps this blood into the aorta and so that blood will also go to the systemic circulation. That hole between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta is called the ductus arteriosus, okay? And what it does is it allows only a minimal amount of blood flow to go to the lungs. It is true a little bit of blood flow goes to the lungs. You can see those right here, these arrows, but we don't want a huge amount going. We want to bypass the lungs, and the ductus arteriosus allows the blood from the pulmonary trunk to go into the aorta, which then goes to the systemic circulation. Okay. Now you'll notice here that once the pulmonary trunk right here via the ductus arteriosus dumps into the aorta, from then on going down through the descending aorta, uh, this is a purple vessel. Um, that represents mixed blood. It has some uh, properties of arterial and some of venous, has sort of an intermediate oxygen content. Again, it's closer to arterial, but it's enough oxygen to really supply all the tissues down here in the, in the lower thorax and, of course, the lower extremities. Okay. Now, as this blood is moving down through the systemic circulation to the lower extremities, it's important to remember that the blood is mixed. It has some properties of venous blood, meaning it has waste products. And so some of that blood you can see here is going to enter into these umbilical arteries. And the umbilical arteries are taking this blood ultimately back to the placenta, and the mother will then detoxify things, get rid of the waste, and so on and so forth. Okay, Yes, this blood will supply oxygen to some of the tissues down there, but it does have waste that does need to be gotten rid of. And so via those umbilical arteries, as you can see right here, it will allow that blood to go back to the placenta where the mother can deal with it. Okay, um, The other thing is... As some of this blood goes throughout the systemic circulation, again, it'll go to peripheral tissues, and there it will become deoxygenated because, again, those tissues are taking up that oxygen. 
And so rather than going through the umbilical artery, some of it will just come back up here through these major veins and ultimately move into the inferior vena cava. So you can see two pathways of blood for the systemic circulation. Some of it will just become deoxygenated totally and return back to the inferior vena cava. And others will actually move into the umbilical arteries, that is the mixed blood, and it will go back to the placenta where the mother can detoxify it. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a decent understanding of the fetal circulation. It's important to understand this before we actually get into the, the congenital defects so you can understand what those effects are actually going to have. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.